Elon Musk is leading the charge in the transition to sustainable energy, setting an ambitious goal for Tesla to sell up to 2 million cars this year. However, the current economic climate presents challenges for consumers looking to purchase an electric vehicle. Prices have been affected by external factors, including higher lending rates, supply chain issues, and increased raw material and component costs. Despite this, Elon Musk and his team are committed to making the switch to electric as easy as possible for Tesla customers. By taking pervasive action to mitigate these challenges, Tesla is setting itself apart in the industry and paving the way for a greener future. But while doing so, they may be creating shockwaves that are crashing onto the shores of other automakers. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of financial data going back 15 years, and it's all freely available. Elon Musk has been aggressively reducing the prices of Tesla vehicles to the point where it's significantly impacting the company's margins and has some investors worried. The average price of a Tesla as of the first quarter of this year is now $47,000 a drop of $5,000 from just the previous quarter across Tesla's entire lineup. And the company also continued cutting price by a few thousand dollars in the current quarter, meaning that margins will be under pressure in the second quarter as well. The gross margins on the average Tesla vehicle when backing out regulatory credits and leasing is down to 18%, the lowest we've seen in at least two years. However, the price of a Tesla is now approximately back to where it was in the first quarter of 2021, and the vehicle costs are still on their way down to their 2021 levels, but continue to remain elevated. Now, while Elon Musk has said on the recent conference call that Tesla is capable of taking margins down to zero and basically sell cars at cost and recoup the value back in the future by selling software products such as FSD, it doesn't appear that the company will do that. At least they haven't done it yet. Elon Musk still has a few tricks up his sleeve to lower costs without completely sacrificing the company's margins. For one thing, the Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA tax credits, have already made their way into Tesla's lackluster margins, but they may be more impactful in the future. In Tesla's quarterly report, they stated, The IRA includes multiple incentives to promote clean energy, electric vehicles, battery and energy storage manufacture or purchase, in addition to a new corporate alternative minimum tax of 15% on adjusted financial statement income of corporations with profits greater than a billion dollars. Some of these measures are expected to materially affect our consolidated financial statements. For the three-month period ended March 31st, 2023, the impact was primarily a reduction of our material costs. And they go on to say, Further, the average combined cost per unit of our vehicles increased year over year due to increasing prices of raw materials, manufacturing, logistics, and warranty costs. These costs were partially offset by manufacturing credits earned as part of the IRA during the three months ended March 31, 2023. There were also idle capacity charges, primarily relating to the ramping up of production in Gigafactory, Texas, and our proprietary battery cells manufacturing during the three months ended March 31, 2023. So this means that manufacturing credits, likely related to battery cell production, were baked into Tesla's cost of goods sold numbers, but didn't seem to help much. Or at least it didn't appear so, because Tesla didn't break out how much money it made on battery credits. They're supposed to be making $35 per kilowatt hour of cell production, and an additional $10 per kilowatt hour for putting that into a battery pack. They also split the Giga Nevada credits with Panasonic but they get to keep all of their 4680 cell production credits, but these are still low and in the ramping phase. We can estimate that if Giga Nevada produces 35 gigawatt hours of batteries, that's about $1.575 billion in credits. But now divide that by two to split it with Panasonic and divide it again by four to get the quarterly number, and that's about $200 million in credits, which is still a small drop in the bucket on $15 billion of automotive costs. Still, that would mean the other factors that Tesla mentioned, such as raw costs and other charges, are $200 million higher than what we see when we back out the credits. Now on the positive side, idle capacity charges for Giga Texas manufacturing and 4680 cells, which appeared in this quarter, will drop as production of Model Y continues to ramp and Cybertruck at the end of the year. 
By that time, 4680 battery cells will also have ramped up significantly, reversing idle charges, and at the same time, further reducing costs by applying additional manufacturing credits. Couple that with a rapid decrease of commodity prices, especially lithium, and Tesla's vehicle costs still have a lot of room to continue to fall. In this quarter, there were also about 10,000 Model S and X vehicles still in transit on their way to Europe. And these are high margin vehicles, which will increase Tesla's average cost, but also increase their average selling price by more, helping out margins. So the first quarter of the year may not be the best benchmark from what we should expect with regards to Tesla's price cuts for the remainder of the year, as CFO Zachary Korn alluded to on Tesla's conference call, since there are still many forces driving down costs which will get stronger as the year progresses. Now fund managers Ross Gerber and Gary Black, who both own shares of Tesla in their funds and are advocates for the company, have had enough of Tesla's price cutting strategy and as of late have been adamant that Tesla stop cutting prices, perhaps even raise them back to where they were, and begin to spend money on advertising to drive demand instead. Now for one thing, the decline in Tesla stock is much more painful for fund managers because they need to report to their clients, who could easily exit on a whim if the fund's performance doesn't meet their expectations. Whereas traditional retail investors don't report to anyone but themselves and can hold on to stocks despite short-term pain, which may last many quarters, but could eventually be rewarded in the longer term. So there's an incentive for fund managers to favor short-term gains in some cases. In a recent CNBC interview, Ross Gerber states that there's no point of Tesla consistently lowering prices because it gives consumers the wrong signal. Why buy a Tesla today when they can just wait and buy a Tesla in three weeks from now at a cheaper price? So he believes this is actually negative for driving demand. And Gary Black echoes this view, stating that Tesla could spend 50 to $100 million on advertising instead of losing billions of dollars in lost profit from lowering prices in order to communicate and to educate potential buyers of Tesla vehicles, showing them how EVs are better than ICE cars. Now, one of the goals of Tesla is to make electric vehicles affordable for the masses, so lowering prices is in line with what the company and Elon Musk have been saying for years. But Ross Gerber and Gary Black are worried about profitability because it indeed hurts the company's stock price if earnings are lower. But Tesla has gotten to where it is today without needing paid advertising. There's also a question if paid ads is off-brand for the company. For instance, why doesn't Ferrari pay for advertising? Of course, Tesla isn't selling to such a high-end market, but it may still send the wrong signal. However, even if Tesla decides to allocate $50 million to ads, how do they allocate this amount, to which country or on which platform, without spreading their budget too thin? But one of the biggest cases against Tesla starting to advertise is that they already do advertise. Tesla just released the statistics that their Twitter posts in 2022 garnered a billion views with 50% follower growth. And they've certainly increased the number of videos and posts on the platform, including YouTube, which will likely drive even better results in 2023. These videos are educating viewers about Tesla products, the mission, how they help the environment, career opportunities, etc. In addition, every event Tesla hosts, such as Investor Day and their annual meetings, AI Day, and even Elon Musk speaking with various talk show hosts or newscasters, etc., this is all part of advertising for Tesla on a diverse set of various platforms. And not only that, but every media outlet picks up the news and spreads it even further. This is unlike any other company we've seen. So Tesla is already doing exactly what Ross Gerber and Gary Black are advocating for, but on a much larger scale, and it's being sourced internally, so it's essentially being done for free. So it's a little confusing why they're pushing so hard for Tesla to spend 50 to $100 million when it's unclear exactly how that money will be spent differently from what Tesla has already thought of. Is there a specific platform or niche that Elon Musk or Tesla are missing? And if they could identify that, could it be covered without Tesla having to spend $50 million with potentially unknown return? Even Gary Black and Ross Gerber going on CNBC and advocating for Tesla, which they've done very well for years and continue to do so, this is advertising for Tesla. Now on Tesla's most recent conference call, management seemed to link their vehicle price cuts with interest rates. Because interest rates have been on the rise, it effectively increases the price of the vehicles that are being financed. 
If we assume a forty to $45,000 loan, every 1% increase in interest rates on a 7-year term is roughly worth $1,500. So if interest rates go up 1% and Tesla decreases the price by roughly $1,500, nothing changes. So Elon Musk seems to want to be keeping the cost of purchase the same, countering the fluctuations in interest rates. From the point of view of anyone financing, for which Tesla sees the data for and has the best read on this, they're not actually cutting price, they're roughly keeping it the same. So this notion that Ross Gerber and Gary Black discuss of delaying an order to wait for more price cuts isn't really happening to those consumers who are financing. And while investors may be worried about Tesla continuing to cut prices to zero margin, as Elon Musk said on the conference call that Tesla was capable of and willing to do, this again seems to be more of a function of interest rates. If interest rates come back down, Tesla could just as easily raise prices. Now interestingly, Gary Black calls price cuts a sugar high since it could pull forward demand and once that demand has been realized, you need to cut prices again to get more customers. Now Tesla seems to say the exact opposite on the conference call, citing that lowering prices brings them closer to where they want to be long term. Additionally, lower prices opens up a larger market for the company. Tesla up until now has only been able to reach about 5% of the auto market, those that can afford their cars. But every drop in price expands the market dramatically, giving access to that remaining 95%. So it makes sense to relentlessly cut costs and to take every dollar to try and lower the price of an EV, which will pay out in spades in the future as Tesla is looking to sell 2 million EVs this year and grow their market share. If anything, advertising is a sugar high because when the advertising money runs out, the sales stop. And so Tesla gets into a situation where they can't stop spending on ads. They will need to spend more and more money going forward once they start, and that diverts their attention away from making the vehicle more affordable, which is what they really need and intend to do. So advertising is a long-term distraction for potentially short-term gains. Now Gary Black was on the Meet Kevin show, and there he even calls the Cybertruck an ad, saying that it will bring people to Tesla's website, and they may not buy a Cybertruck, but they may buy something else, which is excellent for Tesla. This essentially confirms that the tactic of spending money on ads today is extremely short term and contradicts the reasoning of why these fund managers want Tesla to pay for ads. Most interestingly, Gary Black also says that if Tesla educates the public about EVs, they will get their fair share of the market, which he believes is 60% in the US, which is Tesla's market share, and 20% globally, meaning that buyers tend to buy EVs with this distribution. However, if that's true, then anyone advertising about how much better EVs are than ICE cars would get their fair share, but would push people to consider a Tesla at a rate of 60% as Gary Black says. Therefore, any EV advertising helps Tesla. And we saw this during the Super Bowl, where Tesla didn't advertise at all, only their competitors did, and Tesla's sales spiked. Tesla has such a gigantic social media presence that they don't need to pay to advertise but their competitors certainly do. And as their competition advertises, it will benefit Tesla. Another strange thing that Gary Black discussed with Meet Kevin is that he argues that Chipotle, a restaurant stock that he also owns, has a higher PE ratio than Tesla. And Gary Black says, arguably, this shouldn't be the case because Chipotle is getting their growth from pricing, not from volume, which he considers volume to be higher quality growth. Again, this somewhat contradicts his stance on Tesla, where he wants to see Tesla raise prices back to where they were. But actually lowering prices allows Tesla to hit new parts of the market that previously couldn't afford a Tesla, which adds volume growth. This is especially important if Tesla is planning to grow at 50% unit volume this year, and according to Gary's logic, he should see this increased volume as high quality growth. He even states that once you go EV, you don't go back. And so that volume growth becomes even more important to increase Tesla's market share and lock in long-term repeat buyers of the vehicle. Now Gary and Ross are right that Tesla is missing out on potentially billions of dollars of yearly lost revenue as they try to find their footing. But there's another market dynamic happening at the same time that makes this even more interesting. While Tesla's price cuts are helping Tesla sell more vehicles as they're targeting 50% unit growth this year, there's now strong evidence that the cuts are also having a devastating effect on other automakers, particularly in China. Mobileye, which sells driver assistance systems to many of Tesla's competitors, 
just lowered their guidance at the end of April meaningfully from the guidance they just gave in January and mobilized sales to Chinese automaker Geely, the parent company of Volvo, and supplies hardware and software to Geely's Zeker electric vehicle. Mobilize stated that the China electric vehicle market has been negatively impacted by meaningful pricing actions by a global EV OEM, reduction of government electric vehicle subsidies, and general economic weakness in the country. So they're blaming the weakness in part on Tesla's price cuts, which have impacted the EV sales of the entire Chinese EV market, the most competitive auto market on the planet, which is where mobilized customers are located. It's likely that if Tesla's price cuts are affecting highly competitive and affordable Chinese brands, then the global price cuts are also having a devastating effect on other car brands around the world. Without directly saying it, Mobileye has singled out Tesla's insane global influence. So while certain investors are pushing for Tesla to spend money on advertising, something the company already does for free, and to stop cutting prices and instead raise them back up, they're missing that the price cuts are not just about making cars affordable, they're also making competitor cars less affordable. Elon Musk, who actually sees broad industry data from his various companies, may have had enough of being told that Tesla has no technological or battery or cost advantages, and so he's strategically positioning Tesla to come out of this economic downturn much more powerful than before. So do you think Tesla should spend money on advertising or put every dollar they can into reducing the cost of their vehicles? And is there any niche or platform you can think of that Tesla isn't targeting with their marketing strategy? Don't forget to watch my last video on General Motors killing off their top selling EV. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.